Let's see how to win versus volley players having high agility and strong volley attributes like this one, 73 agility and 68 volley attribute in a 2-7 of Tennis Clash, a sports game made by Wildlife Studios. So there are several things you can do to counter the volley players having um, huge agility, of course. Don't do what I just did, <laughs> make summon for Seros. So I'm playing a top 50, Vida. Hit, you can uh, first hit big forehands or backhands if your, your backhand is your main uh, force. As powerly, powerfully as possible towards the two corners of the baseline. So I'm repeating a bit the recommendations that I gave in the other tutorials on how to counter volley players. So you choose your preferred corner and you hit your best stroke possible towards this area. You don't mind about the side where your opponent is weak because most of the time all those huge agility and volley players and strong volley players have very weak forehand and backhand so they will have a very hard time countering your big forehand and backhand. Well, those volley players will try to counter your big stroke by making a drop shot on the return most of the time. Get prepared for that and move quickly to the net to hit another big forehand or backhand towards the corner of the baseline on your choice. Of course, you have to practice the short but fast wipe move, otherwise you will put the ball out as it's easier to hit an accurate powerful stroke down the line or cross court when you are around the baseline like here than when you are close to the net. Okay, so I'm a bit lucky that my opponent made some... Uh, it doesn't have a very good uh, serve attribute here, so... I can make my big forehand cross court or down the line. That's little for them. Well, most of the time, your opponent can't volley this follow up forehand as he's too close to the net. Here, yeah, see? Too close to the net. He, she will be very tight, see? And they can't have enough time to react and execute the counter volley. But if he succeeded in volleying the ball back, just follow up again with another big forehand, just like I did. You follow up, you follow up, you keep hitting this again and again until your opponent admits defeat. And that's it. Okay, so be careful because some of those volley players will rather try and return a longer ball towards the baseline to surprise you. As you expect them to play a drop shot instead. Okay, let's t uh, take a look at the ranking of Veda. Yeah, 19th place. So we can't say that um, that was uh, an, in, an experienced um, volley player. And well, if I can beat uh, her or him, I don't know. Well, you can. If you follow strictly my recommendations, I think that worked. Well, sometimes, you, obviously, you, can't, you cannot win all the time by uh, applying those recriminations, but if you follow them, you, I think that you have more chance to win most of the time than to lose. Okay, here's another high trophies volley players, very high attributes as well. Well, I was saying that some of those volley players will rather try and return a longer bone towards the baseline. To surprise, and in that case, that will be little because you, when you are rushing to the net, thinking that your volley play opponent is going to uh, make a drop shot return well and that you receive a high ball flying by the level of your head towards the baseline you will be forced to play a kind of love volley the game doesn't leave you a lot of choice that will be very easy for your opponent to smash and if you see that pattern in the play just adjust your position accordingly so as to hit a big stroke from the baseline now on the serve of your opponent Try and return a cross court forehand backhand, depending here again on your best hand, to surprise him or her. Even if you obviously you can do what I just did, hit a very very hard forehand towards one of the corners. Okay, you need to be accurate, of course. That cross court win the winner most of the time. Until your opponent figures out your pattern, if you play all the time cross court on her serve. And if she, uh, this opponent starts to adjust the trajectory so as to counter that cross court strike, if he does so, simply change the time after to hit a big forehand down the line when he's placed in the zone that a normal cross court forehand wouldn't hit. You're knowing that is one thing, but seeing where your opponent is uh, moving to 
after he serves, so has to hit a good return towards the good zone. It's not a thing. It's, you need to think fast to do that. And the speed of thinking will come with experience. So don't lose hope. Just keep practicing even if you lose a lot of matches first against the volley players. 73 of... Um, actually, they 76 of volley. <laughs> That's almost ridiculous. And that will come at the end. Okay, 76 agility and 67 volley playing with Kaito. It's not very common to play with Kaito uh, for a volley build anyway. He has a high, very high stats. So, And this one is having almost 2,300 trophies as well. So, yeah, you have to... Uh, to know when to not to hit the, some balls. So hit the ball to make it land as close to as the line as possible. That's what I do and that works against a lot of high trophies for the players. You need to be accurate, of course. Not like me here, but you need to be accurate and it will work with practice. So, whether you choose to hit a cross-court winner, as I explained previously, or powerful forehand down the sideline, just try and make this straight and fast swipe that will make the ball land very close to the sideline, either side. Yep, here, it was useless to me to volley back because uh, it would be a treat for my opponent. Okay. Boom! Yeah. Be why? Why should I do that? Would you say to me? Because your opponent has to choose one side to counter your strokes, or we place himself at the center of the court by the center mark, close to the net. So if you can succeed in hitting the ball towards the two corners of the baseline and as close as possible to the sideline, then the ball will have a very high potential to be out of reach for your opponent. Unless. If he has a too high agility and an extremely high volley attribute, I have played once an opponent having 80 agility and 79 volley. It was a big fight I lost by the end, 47, but that was impossible to, to catch the balls. And even if I hit really, really hard, plus the opponent was using the choker courts, was mission impossible. But when you are close to the net and that you need to make this short and quick swipe towards one of the corners, don't bother to try and hit as close to the sideline as possible because that will be too risky. And uh, you risk making an unforced error, so just hit it hard towards the corner and that should be fine. Yeah, see? So maybe what you provoke the unforced error. Well, not really unforced error, um, an error from uh, your opponent. Well, it's preferable to have a decent serve to win three points on your service. If you play with the power serve plus big forehand build, or if you play with the all around style, then you should have a better chance beating the volley player. But most of the time, you won't ace the volley player because um, they all have very high agility. But with a big serve, well, you put them in a difficult position, a harder diff uh, position. Because the return will be weak, it will be slow, it will fly very slowly towards um, your, your zone, your, your court side, and, and you, will, you will have no difficulty to hit it really hard. So try the first return after your opponent's return is critical. So especially with the power serve plus big forehand build, that is quite effective against them. Uh, because your low agility is not disturbed by the very weak return. If your opponent can return um, easily, the volley player of the volley player, because the re remember, the volley player has a very weak forehand and backhand, so it just plays a big and accurate serve and follow up by a big forehand. But if you are power serve, well, you have low agility, so you have to kind of uh, try and anticipate by rushing to the net. Say, <laughs> even by making cross-court big forehand, you can provoke a lot of errors from the opponent. Okay, so of course sometimes you will eat some smash on returns, but... Well, of course you can still beat those volley players with a very low serve, provided you read your opponent's position method and anticipation tactic well enough to hit the ball which should land on your opponent's side and well, 
Finally, I would say that um, you shouldn't play with the nylon string. It's simple as nylon string. It's, it's not. It's almost impossible now with the March updates from Tennis Clash. If your opponent chooses the basic nylon nylon string and you choose a better string, let's say this for our Wallow Poly, for instance, uh, things will be a little bit easier to win the match. But if your opponent chooses a better string and you play with, what a, with a mere nylon string, that will be extremely hard. So don't be overconfident, even if you have a monster forehand and take at least a good a better string than the nylon string, a swallow pulley or a toro twine, if you want more critical chance and power. Well, you can hit more critical forehand strokes with a, a slightly better string than the nylon string, and you can catch more balls with the long catch tier one of the swallow pulley. So if you want to extend your catch range, you take the choker cord, but keep in mind that um, the choker cord doesn't offer the critical tier one like the swallow pulley does yeah, it's a 71 agility and 58 only volley. But, but, but this opponent is having a decent serve, 43 and, well, decent. It's uh, slightly better than the other volley players, of course. Because the other very high agility and volley players don't, don't bet on the serve. So they just, this, for them, the uh, the agility and volley attributes are enough to beat the players who don't know how to counter them, to win versus them. Well, of course, everything I say is useless here if your attributes are too low compared to your opponents. I mean, if you have a very weak forehand, you can't beat them anyway. Or uh, both uh, forehands and backhands are weak. So if you are unlucky to be much in lower tours, with an overpowered opponent who wants to practice this very high agility and super strong volley skill, the only thing you can do is uh, to hope for your opponent to to make a lot of unforced errors. But, sh but well, don't don't think that your opponent volley player opponent will make a lot of unforced errors because if you have no big forehand or backhand as a main weapon, that shouldn't happen. Those volley players will not. Le let your chance. Okay, well, this was this was cool. I hope that uh, you enjoy watching me show you how to win versus volley players having high agility and strong volley attributes in the Tour Seven of Tennis Clash. It's first game made by Wi-Fi Studios. I'm going to open some bags here, and then I'm going to show you the. Line up the my cards, the cards that I use. Okay. All right. Here we go. So some of the cards are going to be upgraded soon, as you can see with the forge and the koi. They are going to be upgraded very soon. And it's only some more cards. Well, don't forget to subscribe to the channel Gameplay365 to stay tuned for new videos of Tennis Clash, some other tutorials. Thank you a lot for your support, and see you soon on Gameplay365. Bye-bye.